we are going to be learning about the continent of Europe. And as always, I have a learning slides for you here with the links for all of the things that you need to do. No, we will be doing the teacher lesson in class. You have some places to know for your map quiz this week. There are videos to explore. There will be practice and then going beyond for those of you who want to go beyond what we will be doing in class to learn more. Here is our map of Europe. These are the places we are going to need to know for this week's map quiz. You can see that we have Portugal and Spain. We have Africa, the Strait of Gibraltar. We have the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, France, Switzerland, Austria, the, the um, mountain chain of the Alps. We have Italy, Greece, Turkey, the Black Sea, Russia. No Swedish fish, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. You'll find out more in our study story this week. Iceland, Ireland and the UK, the English Channel, the Netherlands, Germany and the Czech Republic, Denmark, Atlantic Ocean. And you should throw in Arctic Ocean. It's not on the map, but it might be on the quiz. We have a study story this week. It will be in a separate video, so you can watch that video to learn the horrible study story of Europe, to learn the countries of Europe using mnemonic devices and pictures. The teacher video will go here, so if you miss um, class, you can watch this teacher video, which I am recording right now, and it will be here. Um, the five themes of geography. While we study Europe, we always go through the five themes of geography, location, place, region, movement, and human interaction with the environment. Starting off with location, looking at a map, where is Europe? We know our continents. We know this is North America where we live. Europe is right across the Atlantic Ocean. So here's the area we'll be studying about this week. You could say that Europe is east of North America. You could say that it's west of Asia, you could say that it's north of Africa. So we use relative location and we use absolute location when we're talking about location. So relative would be using our core, um, our compass rows or our directions of time and space and distance, whereas absolute location would be exactly a point of a place. If we wanted to show where Paris was, we could use the absolute location of coordinates. Or of course, we could always use the address for a specific place like the Eiffel Tower, the address of the Eiffel Tower for location. We will practice some of this in class, but it's your job to know how to find coordinates um, according to latitude and longitude. You find a coordinate point. Place, what is it like there? We do physical characteristics when we're talking about place and human characteristics. These things on this chart are the things that we'll talk about in these slides. Just a reminder about the five themes of geography, what place actually is. Let's start talking about Europe. Well, place, what is, what is it like? We're looking at a physical map here, showing physical features of the earth. I can see the Alps mountains right here. I can see that this is drier land here, um, but this is a physical map of Europe. I can also see a political map of Europe showing the human made boundaries of the different countries in Europe. I can see Europe from space. If I look at this um, satellite picture, I can also see the Alps mountains right here, north of Italy. I can see drier areas. I can see clouds. Um, this is just an aerial view of Europe for your reference. Now, when we talk about place, we also talk about climate. What is it like there? What is the climate like there? And we use a climate map. And in this map, you've seen this before with our other continents. I can use my key or my legend to determine what the climate in Europe is. So by using the key or legend, I can see that Europe's climate is very varied. It's very different from the north to the south. So in the north, I can see some polar regions, all right, in northern Scandinavia here. I see a lot of green in Europe, and that, of course, according to our key, is temperate. It means mild, in the middle, right? Seasons, it's hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Then I see some yellow, that's showing me that it's arid. Uh, well, actually, that's the wrong yellow. This is Mediterranean. This area is Mediterranean climate. So it's warm and dry sometimes and warm and humid sometimes. Um, it's Mediterranean, around the Mediterranean Sea. And then I see some black. And of course, I can use my key and legend to see that that's mountains. And I know the Alps mountains are in Europe. So there's our climate. Um, for physical characteristics, we also should study landforms when we think about a place. There's a number of different landforms in Europe, mountain chain, an island, a gulf, isthmus. All the definitions are here for you. If you'd like to pause, read the definitions. We are learning these along the way in class and in our practice. 
you can see some more landforms. This is the um, United Kingdom. Here's Ireland here, here's England. This is Wales and Scotland. But if I look at this in class, we'll be matching those up to the landforms. Can you find an island? Can you find a peninsula? Can you find a strait or a coast or a bay or an archipelago? So make sure that you can recognize these things in these pictures. Here's another one. This one happens to be of the country of Greece. Um, Greece sticks down into the Mediterranean Sea. So can you find these landforms on this map? We'll be practicing in class. Another thing about physical characteristics of places, landforms. Here's a bay. This one happens to be in the country of England. Um, here's a river. The Rhine River in Germany um, is very a famous river, beautiful river. I definitely recommend you go. A fjord, not common in the world. Fjords are not very common, but if you go to Norway, they sure are common. Beautiful here. And cliffs. Here's the coast along the water and where the water meets the land is a coast. And it happens to be in Dover, England, along the coast is some white cliffs that are famous for being white and beautiful to see. Physical characteristics, some more landforms. We've got mountains. Um, this is in Switzerland. This is also in Switzerland, a lot of high mountains. The Alps mountains are what they are right here. They go through Switzerland and Austria, Northern Italy, um, a little bit into France. Place landmarks. Landmarks are my favorite thing. Um, we have oh, several landmarks that are famous in Europe. We've got Tower Bridge, Tower of London, Big Ben, London Eye, Stonehenge. We have Neuschweinstein Castle in Germany, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, the Acropolis, of course, the Parthenon in um, Greece, Athens, Greece, and the Colosseum in Rome. Other places of interest for landmarks is the Eiffel Tower in France, Arc de Triomphe in France, Notre Dame Cathedral in France, and one of my favorite places in the whole planet, Mont Saint-Michel, which is in Normandy, France. Animals. We look at animals when we study about a place. Um, European animals are very similar to animals, I would say, in New England um, area. Um, we have, um, but they have a lot of farms, a lot of farmland, a lot of sheep, a lot of cows, more than we would see in New England. Um, and there's a video for here to you to watch in your own time. But here are some common animals in um, Europe. Plant life is varied from the climate, right? So in the north, the plant life is very different than the southern Europe. Um, plant life, but we've got a lot of fields, a lot of farming happens in Europe. Um, these are tulips in the country of the Netherlands. There's a big flower industry in the um, Netherlands. We have grapes in the south, the southern climates where it's more warm. So in Italy, um, in France, and in Spain, there's a lot of wine vineyards. Here's some vineyards. Um, and then olives. Olives grow in the south, like in in Italy and in Greece and in Spain, you would see more olives because the climate is, of course, warmer as you get closer to the equator and it's colder the farther you go up to um, towards the North Pole in Europe. So the plant life changes. Well, let's see, what is it like for religion? When we study about a place, we also study about its humans. And so there's a lot of different religions in Europe. You could look at the special purpose map like this to look at the religions of Europe, mostly is um, Christian religions. So what are we getting into next? Um, human characteristics, population. We have seen this map before. The bright red areas are the most populated places. Those would be urban areas and the orange would be more suburban. And then the white is definitely rural with very few people living there. So this is just showing you the whole world. If you can see Europe is very populated, um, not so much as Asia, but it is highly populated. Human characteristics, culture. The culture in every single country within Europe is very different, but at the same time, um, they share a similar history and similar culture. So um, it's very interesting to study each country separately so you can see the individual culture as well as the individual um, kind of personality of each country. Um, and I highly recommend going to Europe to, um, you know, to visit. There's so much to see and so much to do. It's really one of my favorite destinations for vacations. Um, when we look at people, we'll study about this in class, but when we study about people in a place, we also like to see what is life like for the people in that country. And to do that, we want to kind of ask some questions about what is the education like? What is the government like? What is um, the health care like? What's the access to doctors and medicine? Um, how many people can read and write and do math? How many people have clean water to drink? Um, what's the poverty rate? Are there enough jobs? Um, you know, things like that. So we'll look at this more in class, um, but we're comparing France and the United States. You can pause that during this video to kind of check out the differences between the United States and France, which is just one of the countries in um, Europe. 
For region, how is it like other places? Just like the United States, just like South America or Africa or Asia, we break it up into regions to make it easier to um, study and to make it easier to understand. So there's several different regions in Europe, just like we would have in the United States, different regions. Time zones, of course, are also regions. Um, there's multiple time zones in Europe. So traveling from place to place, um, you have to change your clock when you move from place to place, just like anywhere else in the world. Movement, how do things get around? Well, we've learned a lot about imports and exports this year, and Europe is no different. Europe has several different exports. You can pause this video and take a look at them. Um, a lot of them have to do with cars. If you look in this map especially, a lot of cars are made in Europe, right? And we like to drive German cars. I used to drive a Volkswagen, or if you drive a BMW or an Audi, those are all cars that come from Germany. The UK makes cars. Um, oil, wood, vehicles, food, different fruits, clothing, food and beverages, different metals, machinery, manufactured goods, lots of things get exported from Europe and that adds to their overall strength of their economy. Movement, how do things get around? Well, people get around, right? People get around a lot. Actually, Europe has a great system of transportation. They have a great system of trains that is so efficient that most people when they're traveling in Europe get around by train. Um, there's a famous London bus. It's just a unique cultural kind of icon of London, um, England. And so there's buses that look like this. A lot of um, boats in Europe because there are a lot of rivers. And the cars tend to be a lot smaller in Europe because the towns are older, the cities are older, the roads are more narrow. Their cars are generally smaller. Plus the fact that smaller cars take less gas and um, gas can be expensive in Europe. Human interaction with the environment. How do humans get in uh, interact with the environment? Well, Europeans are pretty good in Northern Europe, pretty good about um, the environment. They take the environment very seriously. They have lots of laws and uh, rules um, to protect the environment. They have a great public transportation system and the better the transportation system is, then the less cars need to drive and the less cars that need to drive, the less car pollution. So Europe has a great public transport transportation system. You really don't need to have one more, more than one car per family. And many Europeans don't own a car at all. They just use public transportation, which cuts down on the traffic. It cuts down on the pollution. Um, in Southern Europe, they have less um, rules and laws about safety and the environment. So there's quite a bit of pollution in Southern Europe because uh, we the regulations are less. And so companies and factories put more smoke into the air, more pollution into the air. And there's more cars that have um, exhaust that adds to the smoke in the air. Uh, most of Europe is really good at recycling and they take that very seriously because they reuse everything um, because their natural resources are fewer and far between. So they're more careful with them. And most of Europe recycles very well. They put us to shame. They put the rest of the world to shame. Uh, we'll talk about some more places in class. Big Ben is a famous um, landmark in um, Europe. So is Buckingham Palace. We might talk about the prime minister's house. Um, there are videos for you to see to go above and beyond. Some of these we may see in class or you may do on your own if you're interested in Europe. Please check them out, um, learn as much as you can. There will be some more torture videos added to this um, slide when I get a little chance to torture myself to preview them. Check that out later. And that's all there is for Europe, except for the fact that I mention that Europe is also the name of a super sensational 80s hair band that happens to sing the final countdown. They're called Europe. So just in case you're interested, I have put that link for you here because you have not lived. You don't understand the 80s until you watch the Europe Final Countdown video. It is epic. I say check it out. You don't have to, but I do say check it out. All right, we will practice in class with a word bank and we will practice in class without a word bank. There's going beyond. This will fill up a little bit more over the weekend as I put more videos in here. But if you wanna learn more about Europe, and I do suggest that if your grade is caught up in social studies and you have an A, you have time to learn more. So get in there and look in and learn into the, all these different countries. I put lots of different links to lots of different countries and lots of things to learn about Europe. And it's such a great place to go and visit. So that is all for our Europe and um, I will see you in class. We will get all the stuff done and we'll be ready for the quiz. All right, happy weekend.